the university today is the most insane <laughs> version of the left-wing view of America as fundamentally racist and sexist. If that's the case, why are all these immigrant advocates doing everything they can to bring in more third world people to this, to this cauldron of hatred? It's, it's a complete contradiction. Why don't we <clears throat> spend our last segment together uh, talking about uh, education and culture um, in America, and not just in the political uh, sense. But let's start at the, at the, with the political question. Um, we were talking in the last segment about the difficulty of assimilating um, uh, contemporary immigrants into American culture, uh, a, a problem that manifests itself in different ways uh, in K through 12 education than in higher education, but those ways are also in some um, sense linked. Um, you have uh, written a, a series of uh, uh, terrific articles on the University of California mm -hmm. uh, in the last couple of years, uh, and uh, your your uh, diagnosis of it is, is partly, I, I would say, a familiar one to conservative readers and liberal readers alike in the sense that you focus on the collapse of the humanities and the, the, um, the uh, decline in the intrinsic understanding of what a liberal education is that's being often being offered uh, through the University of California but also almost anywhere that higher education takes place. But the other side of it is, uh, is startling in a different way and that's your writing on the bureaucratic uh, expansion of within the university system itself, the number of non-faculty, non-teaching um, administrators that have grown up on the campus, many of them devoted to hitherto unknown tasks of um, of, uh, key, of of watching campus atmosphere uh, in relation to precisely many of these ethnic, racial, gender. Uh, issues that uh, we talked a little bit about earlier. Where did this idea come from and where is it going in the modern university? It is so preposterous, Charles. And you know, this national discourse, we're having this discourse about student debt. It is amazing to me that the universities are held harmless. The discourse is simply how do we come up with the money to pay this tuition? Should it be federal loans? Should we figure out ways to incentivize, excuse me for using a bad word, students to take more marketable majors, which I don't believe in? Mm -hmm. Nobody asked the universities, why are you charging these astronomical tuitions? And the answer is they have loaded themselves up with these completely superfluous bureaucrats that are living a demonstrable lie. The, the university today is founded on the fiction that it is pervaded by racism and sexism, including the faculty and the students, and that unless the faculty are policed by armies <laughs> of diversity bureaucrats, they are going to discriminate against qualified female and minority candidates. As I say, this is a demonstrable lie. Every faculty in America, every professor in America has been through the identical routine at every faculty search, which is they are desperate to find a remotely plausible black or Hispanic or female candidate to hire. In, this, in the sciences, they've given up on blacks and Hispanics and the game is all about getting in females to the physics department. So the idea that they are discriminating against females and minorities is exactly the opposite, where everybody knows it's the, they're trying to find them. But the university today is the most insane <laughs> version of the left-wing view of America as fundamentally racist and sexist. If that's the case, 
why are all these immigrant advocates doing everything they can to bring in more third world people to this to this cauldron of hatred? It's it's a complete contradiction. They should say stay away because oh, you know, you will be discriminated against. In fact, there has never been a more humane, civilized, tolerant, compassionate environment in human history than the university campus today. But it is run by identity factions and few people understand how insane it is. And University of California now, the, the ratio of faculty to administrators is virtually one to one. Mm -hmm. uh, these are people at the time when, when the University of California was in its worst budget crisis, it was you know, losing billions a year from the state. It was creating quarter million dollar sinecures for vice chancellors of equity and diversity and inclusion, again, on the patent fiction that the university was a place of ethnic and gender discrimination. The feminists, I mean, currently we're also going through this campus rape hysteria, which is uh, this notion that females are living through what would be a crime wave of unprecedented proportions. If, if one in four or one in five females are the victim of sexual assault, the worst ethnic tribal violence in, in Africa doesn't approach that. Uh, what is going on is a, a culture of drunken hookups uh, that women have every possibility of avoiding if they were to exercise personal responsibility and say, you know what, I'm not going to drink myself blotto tonight and get in bed with this guy because the male libido is a chthonic force <laughs> of overpowering dimensions yeah. and sex is, is a primal drive. Right. So if you don't want to have regrets after the fact, which then you're going to label rape, which it's not, uh, just don't put yourself in that position. But feminists would rather see women be so-called rape than say, you know what, you have the power to protect yourself by, by exercising responsibility. Is there any uh, sign of a movement back towards um, a more, the more genteel college campus of a, of a generation ago when you had uh, dorms segregated by sex and some form of, you know, parietal rules about uh, hours no, and so forth? No, the opposite. I mean, universities... You would think there would be a market Well, you would that. think. There are these brave, extraordinarily heroic student groups that are in favor of chastity or abstinence until marriage that have to endure the undoubtedly, you know, the, 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 the contempt and condescension of their fellow students. No, the opposite is the case. It is so disgusting what universities are doing. Yale wrote this handbook of s different sexual scenarios with exquisitely gender neutral participants so that they couldn't be <laughs> accused of being heterosexist right. um, and, and be you know, blind to, to our wonderful you know, gay sexual involvement. Um, but describing in lurid, exhibitionist, voyeuristic detail the various ways of, of oral sex and, and are they now engaged in consent or not. Why are colleges stooping so low? They have lost sight of their mission, which is the greatest thing that humanity can confer on them, which is to pass on beauty and nobility and wisdom. And instead, they are enthusiastically involved in, after the fact, dissecting the, the drunken fumbles and, <laughs> and, and sexual involvement of their students because they don't want to stop this because it feeds the feminist machine. Clark Kerr used to talk about uh, Berkeley One and Berkeley Two, and Berkeley One was the, sort of the serious traditional uh, part of the university that pursues truth and does research and teaching right. as part of that mission. And Berkeley Two was the political, with it, uh, anti-establishment, uh, radical, right. increasingly radical yep. section of it. Um, you you extend that analysis to the whole UC system, and you talk about UC one and UC two. So there still is uh, within the University of California system an excellent liberal arts, or at least uh, let's say an excellent um, higher education to be had. 
there are serious professors, there are serious scientists, there are serious uh, political scientists and others teaching serious stuff and students learning serious stuff. But your impression is that is that that University of California is declining and that the uh, and that the politicized university is in the ascendance. Well, this distinction between University 1 and University 2, which is you're right, it was UC1, UC, it's true of all universities. They, the reason that they can get away with such nonsense is A, alumni fealty, that alumni just keep pouring money in, and B, donors that are giving to the sciences. The sciences in the university are still a thing of beauty, although they are under enormous threat through identity politics. There is not a science faculty in the country that is not under enormous pressure to hire on the basis of gender and race, if that's at all possible, which is rare. But uh, the, uh, the University of California at San Diego Electrical Engineering Department, in the time of their worst budget crisis, they had a new faculty line opened up. Ho you know, hosannas. They were, had a <clears throat> female force down their throats that was not as qualified as their finalists that mm. they had chosen for themselves. Qualified enough. Qualified as we enough. Say these days. Exactly. That's all it takes. <laughs> yes. You meet the you meet the lowest bar. You don't meet the yeah. highest bar. Yeah. Um, so they finally the faculty dug in its heels, but they hired her anyway. They found the money. The sciences are why universities continue to thrive. You're right. There are still Shakespeare scholars, Renaissance scholars who are trying to study and 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 teach students in a neutral fashion without identity politics but the humanities are under enormous threat. Um, but it's very hard to persuade Americans of how bad the rot is because they want to credentialize their children. And, and the irony, of course, is these are the same baby boomer par parents who were so <laughs> anti-establishment and anti-materialist in the 60s that now spend every moment of their waking lives when they have a child trying to get them ready for Harvard. So it's, it's, the hypocrisy is nauseating. But, um, you know, I think the only hope is that the sciences start to fight back, but they capitulate to the identity nonsense as much as everything else. To my amazement, I learned that about half the faculty in this department of UC San Diego's electrical engineering department, they actually thought it was important to mm -hmm. hire on the basis of gender rather than pure scholarship potential and research potential. So I despair. I really do. Mm -hmm.